Hello, everyone. Welcome, my friends, to Chart Your Course, The Roadmap. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about the visual that the Lord has given me to share with you on this um, amazing training. We are going to be talking about um, goals and outlines and themes and our value content and uh, what's the importance of homework and how we mix media and hands-on projects, co coaching methods, and how to launch. You know, um, these are the, this course was really birthed out of the questions that you have given me. And the years that I've been coaching now, you know, these are the big questions and how to answer those questions and put them in, you know, a logical format so that you can make the fastest progress, you know, and just get what you need and move forward in logical steps. And, and it's kind of funny because what I'm actually teaching you is what I'm do actually doing. And so I'm going to be building it in front of you, if that makes any sense, right? So I think that really helps that, you know, that Hebraic model that, you know, when we have a, when we're an apprentice, and we watch, you know, this this master, let's say the bricklayer, and we we learn by by first by watching, you know, um, I do and you watch, and then um, the second step is we do, we do together, and then the third step is so exciting is where the you know the master uh, craftsman watches while the apprentice does, so you do and they watch. So this is you know the model that we have here in Mission Builders, but let me just um, say this. Um, some of the questions that I have been given from, you know, you guys is like, okay, where, where will I take them? What is this big transformation that I'm going to give them? How will I make an offer, create an offer? Um, what are the milestones? How do I create those milestones and what are those? Um, do I do, how will I show up? Will it be in person? Will it be a one-on-one -on -one? Um, coaching program or mentoring? Will it be a group training? You know, will it be an event? So there's many ways to show up. Um, what are the things that I need to produce, create, or what can I reuse, right? Um, and how is the best way that to plan each week's goal, activity, and, you know, all the different, how do I create the stepping stones? And how often will we meet? So, I just want to share this quote from one of my mentors, John Maxwell, and he says this, anyone can steer a ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. And my friends, you are charting the course. Um, leaders who navigate do even more uh, than just provide direction for the people they lead. They can actually see the whole trip in their mind before they even leave the dock. They have a vision for the destination and they understand what it will take to get there. They also take the time to have an understanding of the tools, the tools that they need, the training and the team, right? They recognize the obstacles even before they appear on the horizon and above all the secret to all of this is the navigation, right? And the navigation equals preparation. Let me share with you from Nehemiah 2, starting at verse 13. Um, by night, I went through the valley gate toward the jackal wall and the dung gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved toward the fountain gate in the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount to get through. So I went up the valley by the night, examining the wall. And finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate. There's a whole bunch of symbolism in there, ladies. And as you ruminate on this just for yourself, I mean, I, I look at things like, you know, the valley gate, you know, what makes us even wants to create or chart our course and we learned this in in boot camp right our holy ache nehemiah have had a holy ache and 
much like the valley, right? We're in the valley in those things. The valleys is the things that really um, create the passion for us to do. And a lot of times like the dung gate, it smells, it's not fun. It's, it's not pretty. It's not all, it's a little messy, right? Um, but then I love it that, you know, he moved on toward the fountain gate in the King's pool. And this is ugh, the, the river of life that flows up. We have a fountain that flows up from inside of us. And then when we get to sit by the king's pool, he restores us, he revives us, and he gives us those, those things that we need, yeah? So then in verse 17, um, Nehemiah 2, 17, he said um, to, to the leaders, because you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. And now he's putting the call to action, right? Come. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my, of my God on me and what the king said to me, right? And you all, I want to remind you if, you, if you, you've forgotten, the gracious hand of our king and your king is upon you. And he is saying to us, all of us, let's start rebuilding. Let's start rebuilding. So they began the good work. So welcome again to chart your course, the roadmap. This is a 90 day plan to write and launch your online course or your project that will make a difference. So this could be online or this could be something that you're formulating to do in your church or in your community. Okay. And as a good leader, Nehemiah, Nehemiah prayed as he planned. And he purposely organized his tools, his time, and his team in order to give the training and encouragement that they needed. And we would do well to plan and organize, right? Like Nehemiah did. So let me give you some tips right here. All right. We need to chart it out. We need, this is organizing. This is navigating, right? As we chart the course, here are the things we're going to need to do as the captain of this ship that the Lord has entrusted to us. Yeah, we've been given a commission. And I was in the U.S. Navy, so I know these nautical terms are just dear to my heart. Um, so, okay, number one, I'm going to give you um, several. I think I have seven of them here. Okay, one, we need to give time or make time for planning and organizing, okay? We must, yeah. Number two is we need to get in our crosshairs, our landing zone or our primary purpose. Yeah, we need to understand where we are and where we're headed before we can actually mark and chart the course. Okay. After we list those things, right? After we're getting the understanding, now, number three, we must prioritize the needs and the goals by asking the right questions. Questions are powerful and the right questions are supernatural, right? Those questions really will propel your mission forward. Number four, we need to understand how to set winning goals. Now, we talked about this. We're going to talk about this more in level two. And we get really intentional with this in level three. Okay, next semester is the swoop method of coaching. And else it's also a swoop method of determining what your mission needs, what your um, project needs, 
what your course needs, okay? In Swoop, and I can type this in the chat for you. Okay, let me move this up. Okay, let me do this right, the easier way. All my screens here so you can grab that. So SWOOP stands for our strengths, our weaknesses in our course. You know, what are the things we still need, right? Um, what are our opportunities? Is an O. Another O is obstacles. And then P is our potentials. And again, I'm just giving you an overview today. We're going to go much deeper into SWOOP in our coaching, you know, curriculum. So um, basically, you know, with, with SWOOP, it helps us to determine what those strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, obstacles, and potentials are. Now, in light of your course, this is now you're playing the captain. It's not just what do you need. Now you are navigating the ship to say, where do you need to take your students? Where do you need to take the people that you, your bennies, right? The people who are benefiting from what you're teaching, your ministry, you know, where, what the Lord has for you to do, whether it's mentoring, coaching, equipping, you know, you have this group of people God has called you to. We call them our bennies. They get the benefit of our gifts, yeah? So um, this is very, very important that we start you know, thinking about this. Number five is that our goals need to be SMART. Now you've probably heard of SMART goals. You know, they're, it's the, another acronym, S-M-A-R-T. Yeah, they're strategic. They are measurable. They're attainable. They are realistic. And they are time-centered. So we'll talk more about that again. And um, this is, again, just an overview. So I just want to give you, like, this big kind of unfold the map for you of where we're going. And the next number is number six. Um, we must evaluate our progress. All right. Um, sometimes we get great ideas, but we get lost in the weeds. We start out good. And then we're like the squirrel, you know, oh, let's go over here or let's go over here. Let's do this. Let's do that. We could do another thing. And before you know it, We've kind of lost our vision in a fog, right? Um, and we've kind of got off course. So we need to do some course correction. We need to evaluate the progress of where we are. We need to understand the power of the pivot, yeah? Um, and how to course correct and to steer our ship safely um, around the stormy seas or away from danger zones. And that is very important as a leader. And, you know, sometimes we try to pack too much in. And it sometimes it's really great to just do the basics. And especially if this is your first course, I would highly recommend that you stick to the basics. You give your elementary 101 training. You could always build from there. This is not going to be your first course, I'm going to tell you or your first book, or your first program or project, okay? But this means, this needs to be your signature flagship course that is the heart of who you are because everything else will can kind of um, point from that. It can draw from that, right? And then number seven, above all, we must remember that we have been given commission 
of this ship by who? By our admiral, right? Our father in heaven who guides us and leads us and gives us, you know, what we need so that we can be really great leaders in the duty stations, in the port of calls that he has called us to. Amen. So that was just the overview. And now I'm going to share my screen and I want to give you um, a sneak peek into the workbook. Of course, you know, Coach Lynette has a workbook for you, right? Um, it wouldn't be me without it. So let me go ahead and share. have to get, it's hard to have everybody on and then see the chat at the same time. So um, let me make sure my book is pulled up. All right, where are you? Book, there you are. So let me share my screen. I want to get it to the right page first. Okay, here we go. And here and here. Exciting. Super excited to share this with you. Let, let me move it up so you can see and all those other things can go away. Okay, I think you, you had, can see most of it. So this is a planner, all right? It's a startup guide. And this is what we're building for um, sisters just like you and me who I feel called you know, called to the front. We're called to, you know, bring a message, bring a program to the masses and that, you know, think of, of the people as your crew. So um, let me just go through it real quick here. Um, this is the captain's log. Yes. These are in these four weeks, we're going to look at the port of calling. So I have homework for you this week to, you know, you, this is not just receive, you are actually going to be implementing. Okay. This is going to be very exciting for you. Um, we're going to do a deep dive in our heart set, in our skill set to figure out the passions and the strengths. It will help us to navigate um, our course to a, 3P project. That means it will have passion, it will have purpose, and it will profit, either a profit financially or a profit spiritually. Okay, not everyone is is here. Some we have a, a hybrid of coaching um, that actually is our livelihood as well, or coaching to um that we do this to sustain our ministry. That's how our model is. So everything brought in. Um, helps us to keep pouring back out into you all, right? Um, so number two, week two is your crew, okay? And as we've learned before, those are our bennies. These are the people that get the benefit of what God's called us to do, okay? How we show up as mentors, coaches, equippers, right? Um, we will Go back in, and I know you got this in, in boot camp if you've been, you know, a year-long student with us, um, but we go back into look at our bennies. We need to get a clear, clear, clear picture of our audience, um, a detailed understanding of who we will serve and how we can find them, yeah? And then we get into the really the meat of this, and in week three, I'm going to unpack something that's going to blow your mind, all right? It is a digital roadmap, and it's a navigation tool for you to use for yourself through planning, and it also, you can give this to the people that you're serving. So it's super exciting, but we go through the nuts and bolts of planning your course, outlining your lessons and putting together the bones of the course um, so that you can have an action plan and ready to start implementing it right away. And then four is a really nice dovetail week four into our coach's toolbox, okay? So that's the, the very next thing for this semester. So we launch, but 
we need to this. I love this part. This is the creative part where we get to be artistic. Um, we we shape and form how it will actually look. We pick our theme. Um, we get the name. We get the, the course colors, um, the price, if there's a price tag on it. Um, we get to figure that out. And that's exciting because these funds can help us propel our ministry, you know, help us buy Bibles, help us, you know, create the technology that we need, you know, all these things. Um, we're not just asking people, you know, to give us funds, but we're actually doing something. We're actually showing them we're we're really in it to, to, um, to help ourselves, right? We're not just asking for the fish, but we're asking for the, the fishing supplies so we can teach others how to fish, yeah. So, um, and this will, this also is great to show up um, all the different ways, the different platforms that we can show up, especially the online, the digital landscape that we're in, you can show up and use as your stage and your microphone. So I'm super excited about that. So let me just show you um, week one here, your port of calling. And does everybody like like the nautical theme? And can you picture the imagery? Are you feeling like you're you're starting, you're kind of on the dock and you're ready to embark on this journey? Okay, well, I'm excited because yeah, that's me and I'm, yeah, I wanna be there for real <laughs> myself. So, okay, so let's look into this chart your course and this is what you do as a course creator okay let's say you were going to do this in in five days you're you're not but okay if in actually every day every week we do this all the time okay we assess we assess the destination we we analyze that is another a word we could use and if you if you're following along i'm showing you how to draft your own signature program by using the A, B, C, D, E method, okay, that's right here. Okay, this is why I'm doing this for you because I'm showing you how you can carve this out, use your own vocabulary for your own, you know, um, people group for your course, right? Set your destination. It's gonna be this, no matter what word you use, you're setting your destination, right? And then you move on to step two or day two is you really research your audience. You need to know what do they need? What are the struggles that they're really in? You know, I, I think of, sometimes we have a couple audiences like myself with Mission Builders. I have some audiences that are, um, they're already coaches, they're already authors, they're already, and they need to know how to pivot to the, the digital landscape, right? And they need these tools that we're offering. But then another audience are those women who kind of feel lost and they don't even know their purpose and they're struggling and they're really looking for that. So I have to set my intention and my vocabulary and everything I do around my audience, where are they hanging out? And um, what do they need from me? So as you know, we're in the midst of our, you know, year long, past halfway through our Mission Builders Academy year training. So we're really intentionally focused on leaders right now that are already in it. Okay, they're already doing it, but they need help. They have been missing some pieces. So this is we are an answer for them so that we can help fill in the gap. Okay, so day three, um, this is where we really chart it out. You need to know the milestones that you need to cover. All right, think of think of an actual two, two pieces of land, or let's say there's two islands, okay? There's this island of misfits and they're confused and they're not happy here and then you have the the, the treasure island it's the, it's really where they want to be this is the the transformation okay and we as the coach or mentor or equipper it's our job to build the bridge yes to go from one place to the other and our milestones and if you know um bridge building 
They need pillars, right? You have to have pillars before you can put the roadway across. Now the milestones or are your ports of call or the places you're going to visit are those pillars that you're gonna implement that can create that transformation. They're gonna need all of that. Or like if you have one of those, um, <laughs> those rope bridges with the wood pieces, you know, they're very, you know, you have the rope and you have to set the, the wood slats forward for you to walk across. That's kind of what you're doing when you're building your course. And one step builds upon the other. And then day four, you need to design it. You need to have a cohesive theme. Um, we're going to talk about branding. We're going to talk about colors. We're going to talk about, you know, things that are aesthetic to the eye. It's, it's, you know, like when you eat your food, right? It's much, it tastes much better when it's beautiful, right? It, it's more attractive. You're going to want to, to go to it when it's, it's pretty and appealing. And the same thing with our course, you know, we, if it's just blah, it's not going to be exciting for people. But if we create like, this is what we're doing. We have a theme where we're going on a navigational tour right now. You know, you're the captain of the ship. Do you see that imagery, how it like makes you excited about where you're going? And that is the thing that we're, that we want to put into our course. And day five, um, equipping the ship. And it's great to build um, a vessel, but if you don't have the right tools, the right equipment, if you don't have the cargo, if you don't have the food supply, if you don't have um, the, the gasoline or the fuel, you need all of these things before the ship could go, before it could leave dock, right? So this is what we're, we're going to be, this is the, just the overview, but this is really, if you only took a picture of this right here, you could create your course. If you really dug deep, but you don't need to do that because I created beautiful things for you already. So <laughs> it could be a no brainer, right? You can just go along with me. That's why I'm here, right? Okay, so I'm just going to preview these sheets that I will email to you. Oh, you've already downloaded them if um, if you're watching the recording. So um, the holy ache. And this might be review for some of us, but we do need to revisit this. We need to revisit because we may have a holy ache for many things, but what is it now? We got to get focused for this course. This course that you're giving, okay? And you you have to have that target, that cross here. Um, what is the outcome that you want your bennies to get at the end of the course, when they finish the training with you, what are they going to receive? How are they going to be different? So from that lens, you want to look at your holy ache. Okay. And then we're going to look at this because let's get started. Let's, what are the things that we still need in our toolbox? What are the things we need to learn? Do we need to buy some supplies? Okay, if you're a student, you know you need paper, you need a pen, you know, we may need to get, you know, a computer, we need to make, you know, and if these are the things, we need to figure it out and ask the Father, Lord, you know, we need these things. How can, you know, what is the best way? What is your plan? Or show us how, um, you know, where the resources are to get them, right? And it may just be know-how of how to, you know, set up a Zoom account. And, and again, we go through all of this in the rest of our class. So uh, let me go to this, excuse me. And I don't want you to focus just on the stuff that you don't have. I want you to also take an inventory of the things you already know how to do, all right? So this is think about your skills, your skill set. You already know many of these things and it's going to surprise you and it'll give you courage and encouragement to keep moving forward, okay? Because you already know. So we carve out this special plan with you by looking at your strengths. 
again, by looking at your strengths. Where your strength zone is, is where you're gonna make the most progress, okay? And then we're gonna do here again, we do an audit, we're looking at, you know, what are the skills, their top six skills, and you're gonna, you know, go through this little reflection. This is really getting to know who you are as um, an equipper, yes? Okay, and using some methods to test drive your course, um, you wanna hear from your Benny and find out what people really need. This is where you validate what you're doing, okay? Um, you can be emailing, you can, you know, ask the people that you are already serving. If you're already, I know you're a teacher, Obiaku, you have students, what are, what are their struggles, you know? What are their needs? What, you know, what are the things that they um, need help with? This helps you uh, to create your content, okay? Some of our best, you know, kind of outlines have come from conversations I've had with my students. Yes? And you could use uh, keyword searches. Um, words are powerful. You Look up, you have you know, access to the dictionary, look up words and the purpose of words. It, and, you know, everything started with a word, right? The Lord um, made all this come into existence with his word. So words are the word of God and words in general, they speak life, right? They can speak life or death. So let's use them for life, right? You can, um, you have ability to join Facebook groups that are in um, the niches and um, the circles of influence that you're serving, you know, Pinterest, and there's there's a lots of different things. So these are just um, you'll have this in your in your worksheets. Then we go about you know looking, writing down again. This is all self reflection. This is a lot I know, um, but if you do the work, you're gonna get a better outcome for the course that you want to write. All right. What are the skills? What is your passion? And what is the potential profit that you can have, right, from this course? So if you're, you know, there's there's a lot of analogies I can get here. But, you know, again, one of, one of my mentors, uh, Coach Tam, she says, you know, if you have a ministry, it's awesome. But if you don't know how to fund your ministry, you won't have it for very long. We need to know how do we, how can we fund it and what would make something profitable? And profit doesn't mean we're selling a $10,000 program. It could mean, you know, what what can people afford in, in your circle that you're reaching, you know? And that's what I, we have done. We've tried to make it very affordable for uh, most that can, you know, it's a little bit of sacrifice, but you know what? I found that people show up for the things that they invest in. And I want, I don't want you to create all your blood, sweat and tears into some program and have people show up for free and they don't get any benefit because they're, they're not showing up. They might show up on day one, but I look at you, you guys are, <laughs> you're warriors, you're here, you know, you've been here for the long haul. I'm so excited for, for seeing that because I see the passion in you. I see that you're showing up and that this is the thing with people and we can pay for things in many ways. Okay. It's not just financial, but this is what I'm saying to you. Um, for your course, for what you're offering. You want to pour into people who are at least showing up for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is where it's going to, and the sweet zone is going to be in the middle there. So um, we take a deep dive. Uh, you know, when you're looking at crafting your course, this is probably one of the most important things to do is to start looking at what other people are offering. Okay. What else? is out there that is similar to what you do? What do you like about what they're doing? And what's your point of difference? How are you different? How are you going to, I don't wanna say make it better, but how are you gonna reach the people 
and make the most impact. Um, so you can learn a lot by watching what others do. What would you do differently? Okay, we talk about your audience. Again, this is, you can take these worksheets, use them as you will, but I just want you to understand, you know, I'm not gonna handhold and go through each one with you. I'm gonna give you the packet and you're gonna do it. And I would love to hear next week, like what's your feedback? What did God show you by doing some of these activities? Um, think um, about the dreams and the needs and the skill sets of the bennies that you're serving. What are the overlaps and how can you serve them best? My friend, this is all intel for your course, okay? This is Nehemiah right now. He went and inspected the wall. He inspected the gates. And this is how you would go out and inspect the gates. And then you come back and you're super excited because now you get to pick where you're going to be. You define the coin that you're going to be. And I think this is probably, we're going to have a mini session just on this alone because we need to hone down, you know, yes, I reach mission builders, right? That's kind of like my big um, mega barrel that I'm in or my my circle, right? And um, I would say if I had to pick body, soul, and spirit, of course, because of who we are, we're all integrated into all three. But really, this is a physical need we're offering. We're offering practical tools. Okay, nuts and bolts, technical training, how do I do X, Y, and Z? So this would really be a body physical need um, with the barrel that we are in currently that I'm in. But I also incorporate the soul and the spirit to it. But that's my big focus, right? But then I look at, you know, mission builders, but getting a little bit more narrowed down, we focus solely on women. These, this is our calling. We're called to women, okay? And then particularly women in ministry. Now we're getting even more specific. It's not every woman walking through every life situation, but this is particular women who are building their programs, who are building their ministries, their missions. So this is, do you see where, you know, it's kind of like the selection, right? Uh, where I'm, I'm getting more and more, um, honed down so I can speak directly to this person who really needs what I have to offer. So I'm cutting away all the extra stuff so I can really get to the, the crux of it, right? And then the micro niche here um, is our coaching certification um, for kingdom women. And, and, you know, what we're building even further than that is people who could could join this with us and who can um, really become certified in those things that they're they're doing. So this is like this, this process you bring people through and you go through and saying, okay, who, who's the big group? How can I narrow that down? And what's really my heart set on this? You know, and how how can I really speak to them? If you if you had your choice of who to speak to, who would you be speaking to all day long? Like you'd never get bored, you know, and, and this is a, a clue to all of these things. So um, I also have, this is kind of re repetitious. If you've went through boot camp, um, CIA files, this goes along with your, you know, when you're researching who else is doing what in your, in your circle of influence in your space, right? Um, who are your peers? What are they offering? What are their strengths and weaknesses as you perceive them, right? Um, how are they reaching their audience? And um, what are they pricing their, their program for, right? We know like even in Academy um, that there's a price. There's, it, it's, there's something there. So, you know, again, I don't want you to put all of this work and not get the best impact. My goal, I'm going to stop, share for a minute. My goal is to help you to reach as many people as you can, to make as much transformation as you can, okay? 
I'm not here. I'm not one of those coaches saying I'm here. So you could make, you know, a seven figure income. That is, that's not who I am. Okay. I pray that you will be financially blessed, but my goal is that you could reach and an, an impact those people that God has called you to reach. Um, and that, you know, to let's stretch this. Let's, I, I think about, I was reminded um, from my pastor this Sunday, you know, second Kings four, the, the, the widow with the oil. Okay. We all know are familiar with this story, right? She needed money. Her sons were going to be taken as slaves because they're somehow her husband got into debt and now they couldn't pay the debtors. And in that culture, if you couldn't pay your debt, they took you as a slave, right? To pay, to work it off until you paid it. And then also in that culture, if you were a widow with no family, with no son, you were, you know, had to go begging for food, begging for anything you needed. So she was in a very desperate place, right? But what did the man of God say to her? What do you have in the house? And at first she said, I have nothing. But then she remembered that little flask of oil. I have nothing except this. And can I lean in and sis and tell you that if you go through, if you really are intentional this week and you go through these worksheets and you go through the heart set in the skill set with Jesus, he's going to show you your little flask of oil. Because I know you have already been doing this maybe for a while, but maybe you spread the oil so thin it's not making an impact. And he's going to really get you honed in where you need to pour that oil. And then it's like when she asked her sons, go to all the neighbors and see if they could spare a vessel to bring the vessels. I see this. I see us as now the Lord will bless that flask of oil that he's entrusted to us. It's the ship that we're supposed to steer, right? And as we focus on that and pray on it and really use it to the best, we're going to be able to pour it out and we're going to see vessels upon vessels upon vessels filled to overflowing. And that is my prayer for you because I want you to make an impact. That is why we are here. It's not just financial and it's not just physical, but it's also the spirit. You know, what is God's intention for you when he created you? Diana and Julia and Obiaku and all the others, when he created you, he had an intention, okay? And the things that you've been through in your life have set the course for you. They are now building blocks for you to move forward. They are, right? All those things that you have sur survived and thrived and now you're gleaning those beautiful gems where you can put into something that is manageable. All right. Again, when we want to set a course for people, we cannot overwhelm them. And I'm almost nervous that some of these, some of these sheets are too overwhelming for you, but I know my seasoned people need this. Okay. Cause you've already been through the 101. Now you need the advance. This is kind of like an advanced chapter of mission builders of boot camp. So now you really need to do to dig in deep and say, all right, am I going to do this, Lord? Okay. The time we talked about this early on in our conversation today, you know, we put these timelines on ourselves. We put the pressure and the burden of getting it done. When all God is saying for us to do right now is just to be prepared. This, my friend, is how you prepare, okay? You're already ready. You're already ready when the time comes for God to open that door and say, now I choose you. You are one of the virgins who had their oil ready. You had your, your wick trimmed and you are ready. So when that 
wedding procession comes, he's like, all right, you're ready, you're there. So I'm super excited um, to encourage all of you to get ready, to get prepared. And, you know, to and the word says that we need to be prepared in season and out of season. And I know we've all had different, diff different struggles. And can I even say this, like, the things that I've been writing like five months ago, four months ago, even when I was recovering from a surgery and I'm writing notes and I was preparing to be ready for today. Okay, so I, I want to give you a real life example. Now, God, as I'm obedient, I just have the big um, ports of call that I'm going to give you. And I have the outline, but the meat comes when I show up. This is the meat. I can't script this, okay? I can't pre-do, I show up and the Holy Spirit speaks through me. This is as easy as it is, my friend, okay? You don't have to have pages and pages and pages and pages. You know, you have your outline. You have the bones. God will give you the meat when you're ready to show up. But in between then, he's going to speak to you in the night. He's going to wake you up and give you things that you need to write down. He's going to give you visuals. He's going to have you take pictures of things that are going to speak loud to you and really feed your soul. By showing up and being here, you're getting close to the fire where it's going to keep that passion burning. It's going to bring the wind into your ship, into your, your sails. Okay. So I just want to tell you. I love you. I want to tell you, you can do this, that God has a, a plan and a purpose. And I just want to, I was reminded of this as well recently, that God has a greater purpose in all of it. It's not just our single purpose. Here, where can you see this pen? It's not just this one pen, right? That can, you know, there's, there's a limited amount that can be written with this pen. I have my, my favorite pens, they run out of ink like really fast because I do a lot of writing. <laughs> but when we come together, so much impact can be made. There's a greater purpose. This pen has purpose. When we all come together, there's a greater purpose that God has in store. OK, so I just want to encourage you that this is for such a time as this. And the other really cool thing that I just realized today, and I knew I knew this, but it was just like highlighted to me that um, Nehemiah and Esther are side by side in the Bible. These two heroes of, of mine, right? These two books are side by side in the Bible. Esther and Nehemiah. And I just love that because they are both those pioneers. They're both brave. They're trailblazers. They had to do something brave. And um, it really, really super encouraged me today. So I pray this was an encouragement for you. We will have more uh, next week when we really look at your crew. So um, stay tuned and just be ready, get ready so you don't become ready so you don't have to get ready. You'll already be ready. That makes sense. <laughs> I love you guys. God bless you. And we will talk really, really super soon. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me in the email. And I'm very excited about what God's going to be doing. So God bless you.